So anyway, my name is Gilbert Brown. I'm not the Green Bay Packer. I'm not that thick, dark, or rich. Or else I'd be syrup. But instead, my name's Gilbert Brown. Yes, I'm known as the Naughty Res Dog. I'm Klamath, Modoc, Paiute, Yehuskin of the Pit River Band, Warm Springs. And I just found out I'm part white and can't prove it. <laughs> Depressing life. <laughs> I'm, uh, I uh, found out through uh, Ancestry.com. They couldn't prove it, so uh, I did my homework, did some studying, went on journeys, prayed a lot, and I found my baby bottle bag, and I come from royalty. It's about 80 proof. <laughs> I brought it here today to prove that I'm part white. <laughs> Sounds pretty crazy, huh? That's what I tell white folks when they come, oh, my great-great-grandmother was a Cherokee princess BS. She was just another Indian, go back to work and leave me the hell alone. I know what you folks were thinking when I come walking up here. That is one big lesbian. I'm just saying, because I live in Portland and they're very happy, you know, like, happy? And so, uh, I'm off mistaken for other entities, beings, and whatnot. So if there's any Japanese here, hi! I heard there's a Mexi skin, hola. Any Samoans, Hawaiians? Let me hear ya. No? Aloha. I'm often mistaken for an anorexic Samoan midget. And then, you know, Portland. Hey. Oh, you might think it's San Francisco. Hey. You too could look like this. You could buy our shirts. Um... I, uh, I, I like to, you know, get in people's faces about stuff, you know, uh, you know, we got the Washington Redskin issue, so I came up with the shirt, the Washington Rednecks. <laughs> Don't forget, it's because we honor you. Thank you, Duck Dynasty. Redneck Wedding. Oh, man. You watch all those shows, hunting and fishing shows. Look at YouTube. Guys setting themselves on fire. Ice water challenge. I think, man, Indians swim in that water all the time. What challenge is that? I always wanted to take a white guy out there. and Hey, you got to go swim and sweat with us and get in this glacier water. And then you'll know why Indians sing so high. <laughs> My bro moved up to Montana. He moved up on the Flathead Res. And he became a reincarnated Flathead. <clears throat> Another bad experiment gone wrong. <laughs> so for his bachelor party, we went in a sweat. They couldn't get those rocks hot enough after that first dip in that glacier water, man. I, there was no more sweating for this Indian. I was just trying to get him to drop back down again. <laughs> oh, man, I sound like one of the chipmunks. Oh, man. Yeah, I was uh, seeing you guys have blankets here. Yeah. Indians do a lot of giveaways, and that's where our version of re-gifting, you get the blankets. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I live in Portland, Oregon. The other two are Hollywood Indians. <laughs> They've been on Spike TV, BBC. All I've been on was Cops, Reservation Edition. <laughs> Got real stupid at them. So where'd you hide the drugs? <laughs> are you trying to kiss me? 
I'm like, heck no, man, Indians. We don't use our hands to point. That's just rude. And we're always in cuffs, so. <laughs> and if you talk to the old ones, our elders, man, when they, man, they're like the Matrix and stuff. <laughs> What'd he say? Well, he said you got to go down the road 3.2 miles. <laughs> You're going to see a creek bed right there. You cut across that creek bed, and if you get lost, you look to your right. And there you are. <laughs> All I asked was to go to the bathroom. That's right, white bread. <laughs> That's the boundary. <laughs> We're like John Wayne. We ain't taking your crap no more. <laughs> What else can I tell you, man? I'm feeling really good. I lost 215 pounds overnight. My wife left me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a whole lot of love, you know what I mean? Yeah. She knocked the wind out you. <sighs> And you ever been with a girl like that, man? Had you sound like those blood uh, pressure cuffs, you know? <laughs> You like that? No, I can't breathe. I was like, what the hell? I was on the bottom. Oh, man. Tell you what. Yeah, that's another thing. I found out I was fat. <laughs> Find out how to lose weight, make it look good, buy bigger shirts. <laughs> I don't need to sag. <laughs> Man, yeah. I got uh, MC powwows and stuff like that, so I, uh, I, I had to quit powwowing because I kept leaving divots in hardwood floors. <laughs> It's kind of embarrassing. Uh, I also went on a canoe journey. I don't know if you guys ever heard of the canoe journeys. It's a coastal thing. You know, the Northwest tribes, they all come together. And uh, they used to trade. And they'd get in these big canoes and they'd paddle to places. Well, this time I went to Canada and I couldn't even figure it out because I can't even spell Canada right. Come to find out, that's the first words they learn in Canada. How do you spell Canada? C A N A. D, eh? Hey. Cool. But I went in this canoe, man, and I was right up front. They wanted me to go out front. And so I get up front, and I'm pulling like that. That's what they call it. It's pulling, not, you know, rowing, but pulling. So I get in there. Oh, man, I'm getting tired. And I look back, and the canoe's in the air. They're like, scoot the middle, stupid. So I scoot back. You guys ever see a low rider canoe? It was low. So the skipper back there, he said, hey, Gilbert, man, jump in the water, go swimming. It's cool. Dolphins will come up and play with you. Sea turtles will want to swim by even a little seahorse. Kiss you on your cheek. I said, You know I want a horse race, right? And he's like, no, no, not like that. But they're little tiny seahorses, and they'll come up and kiss your cheek while you swim. Okay. So I get in, man, and they leave me out there. I'm like, what the heck? So I'm like, okay. So I start following them. I'm swimming along. And it was cool, because here comes the little sea turtles, little seahorses. <laughs> But it wasn't a pot of dolphins that came up. It was a pod of killer whales. So we all took turns jumping up and down, splashing them. <laughs> rolling. Beautiful thing, right? It was all cool until one tried to free Willie. I'm like, hey, I'm a boy! <laughs> yeah, it ruined my fun. I ended up on an episode of Whale Wars. Stop that. So I started working out, man. Started doing some crunches. 
<laughs> All I got was a sore neck. Yeah, I'm the old man of the crew, man. I'm I'm the old man. I thought I left shampoo in my hair or something, and here it was gray hair. Damn. Sucks. So I tried to roll over and do push-ups. All I got was high center. <laughs> my damn kids came in there and used me for a teeter-totter. Spun me around. <laughs> Dad's breakdancing. <laughs> Shut up and help me out. Terrible. I know I'm fat because, man, I've closed down more buffets than E. coli. <laughs> I am a teepee. Man, yep, sweat houses. I thought I was in a one-man sweat house, man, because I started having visions of blue water, native brown trout swimming, and somebody started pounding on the door. Hey, I gotta go, too! I was like, what the? can't even enjoy my vision. <laughs> Dang, yeah. So, yep, I'm all those tribes in part white, can't prove it. <sighs> People always say, how far back do you remember, Gilbert? Well, I can remember swimming around by the seat of my pants, well, at least my dad's, in Vietnam. He uh, flew a helicopter, and I remember that, and I remember going to a rodeo with my dad, going home with my mom. You do the math. All those tribes didn't get along but for one night in a horse trailer. Ta -da. I, I, uh, Jim told you that I uh, wild horse race, I'm the mugger. I, uh, it's a three-man event. You got to stop a wild horse. You fill all the bucking sheets full with uh, wild range horses. You put a halter and a lead rope on them. You turn them all out at the same time. You got three guys, your jockey, your anchor, and your mugger. <laughs> My job is to open the gate and let this horse out. The very first time, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Think I'd have learned my lesson because I threw that gate open hard as I could, and this horse looked at me and ran me right over. I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> did I get up? Yes, I got up. Did I try and mug that horse? Yes, I did mug that horse. I mugged him like, I, what? Why would you grab 1,500 pounds of dog food? Would somebody tell me what is wrong with us today? This is modern technology. We got quads, ATVs, but no. There's Indians still out there trying to grab these wild horses. I even uh, lost a part of my body. My Indian name is now Shortbird. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even get road rage right with that, man. <laughs> hey, you just cut me off, man. That's my warrior fit. <laughs> I'm sorry, nice lesbian. <laughs> so, yeah, that's... A horse bit it off. It was in Warm Springs, Oregon. Could have happened anywhere else. Red Bluff, Ellensburg, Reno, all these rodeos that have wild horse. No. You know why? Because it's on the res and Indians are cruel. <laughs> they make fun of you. They laugh at you. You're all laying there all injured. <laughs> Actually, I wasn't laying there all injured. I had, man, it was kind of crazy because it bit. And uh, you ever bite a carrot? I'll let you think about that one next time you bite a carrot, because that's what it sounded like when he bit my finger. So I'm sitting there looking, and they're yelling at me, hey, get the uh, halter on the horse. I said, he just bit my finger off. <laughs> you know, I'm standing over this horse, and I'm wanting to punch it, but then I'd have been probably broken hand. If you ever hit a horse in the head with your bare hand, he got a hard melon. This I know, because in Pendleton, I got knocked out. <laughs> I kissed this horse about four times, they said. His head come around, pow. That wasn't enough for this guy. I had to go in for hard kisses. <laughs> and I got knocked out. But that's another story. <laughs> hard 
so I get get there and I'm like, oh man, what am I doing? They said, well, go see the the ambulance, the EMT. So I run over there. I know I walked. I, it's, yeah, I don't run. <laughs> uh, running, yeah, right. Just to the bathroom. But anyway, and the buffet line. But anyway, <laughs> I get there. I'm like, uh, hey boys, I'm missing something. And they're watching the rodeo going on. And oh, what's up, Mr. Brown? And I go like this, and blood squirts out there. <gasps> and they take off running around the ambulance. Three times they run around this ambulance. I say, hey boys, door's right here. No, no, we're finding gauze. I thought you were doing ceremony or something, you know? <laughs> like, damn, medicine people anyway. But they're like, man. So we got to wrap your hand up, and they're calling life flight. I'm like, what? No, uh-uh. I'm not getting on no life flight for a finger. Are you kidding me? I just don't want to be the disappointment. I look like a bad carnival ride. You know those kitty rides? The helicopter gets up so high and drops back down. <laughs> I can't. I said, I'll drive. I'll be all right. And like, no, no, we'll take you. I said, no, my mom's right here. So they get into town, you know, and it's like the tip of my finger. That's all they got. And they're wanting to still life like me from Madras to Bend to where they can operate on it. Like, oh, crap. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm just going to ride down there. You can't, you can't sew the tip of your finger on because there's no major veins or nothing like that. So I'm like, yeah, okay. So after all said and done, you know, you guys, this is what I'm talking about. My little brother, the uh, cohort and wall horse racer too. He says, oh my God, I saved that horse's life. You ought to thank me, bro. I said, what'd you do? He said, that horse, he was choking on your finger. <laughs> I'm like, shut up. No, no, really, he was choking. So I got in there, and I gave him the Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> I was like, shut the hell up and get away from me. <laughs> and I'm like, yes. So keep your, horse, your fingers away from your horse's mouth. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> but yeah, so my son's doing it. He's number one right now in uh, the standings of the wild colt race in the senior division. So he's tackled almost every horse, but he don't want to play football. I'm like, what is wrong with you? You get to wear a helmet. But no, you wear a cowboy hat? I said, you yeah, sissy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've tried other jobs. I've tried being a, a, a stripper. <laughs> Shut up, it could happen. It almost happened. Because I was trying out for Chippendales. Because I got big cheeks. <laughs> and that's how I found out they're strippers. Men strippers. So I get up there and I get my groove. I'm like, yeah. And then all of a sudden they stop. Whoa, ladies, put your money away. It'll, we'll talk about it later. <clears throat> so they said, wait, Mr. Brown, you got to wear one of these. It's a thong. Okay, so I get to sing on. I'm like trying to bad little Indian, bad little Indian. I didn't get the job. Only because I had the damn thing on backwards. Oh, does that explain the bad camel toe and you know? What you got I've tried cowboying. I uh, I went to a rodeo over there in Wyoming, and they're having this first event. You know, is bareback riding. I said bareback, not broke back. <laughs> so I get my gloves on and my shaps, and I'm getting up there, and I look down. You know, I'm looking down in the chute right there, and this horse look. You ever see a horse do a double take? He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he just died. I want a buckle for that. I, I don't know where it went. <laughs> anyway, so I was feeling bad. And I get down and uh, I start walking away. And this guy comes up and he goes, hey, man, you want a job? I got a job for you. He says, All you got to do is wear this T-shirt. He says, and what else? He says, 
You're gonna go out in that arena right there. There's two thousand pounds of Big Mac in those shoes. And all you gotta do, that bull rider's gonna get bucked off. He's gonna get way up there and hit the ground. He's gonna be a little disoriented. So you need to get between the, him and the bull, and I'll be right behind you. I'm like, what? <laughs> he says, pay's good. All right, what the hell? So, man, here comes the bull rider. He gets on, gets bucked off. Mm. I run up there, and that guy trips me and rolls me up there. He was using me for the dang barrel. <laughs> oh, hell no. So, man, I, uh, I went, and I went and found a, a DVD on uh, Cowboying. It's called Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> Huh? That day I was very proud that I was an Indian, not a cowboy. I'm claustrophobic. Don't like sheep. Wool's not my thing. So here I am. You know, I've been at the city in Portland, Oregon for 20 years now. I can't believe I'm an actual Indian because I've had a job longer than 20 years. Actually, a year. <laughs> what the? But, man, it's, it's crazy in Portland. It's crazy because I got mistaken for a lesbian. And it was weird how I did it because I got my first paycheck. And I went out on the town, getting my groove on, right? Girls are buying me drinks, getting the Indian all buzzed up. I'm like, yeah, I'm getting my freak on, yeah. <laughs> and then I started noticing, <laughs> what the... Girls are kissing girls. <gasps> it's a lesbian bar. I think I'm a lesbian. You guys know what I did? <laughs> I went with it. <sighs> what a night that was. I'll tell you more later. <laughs> I get it. Man, I, I got to learn these stupid phones. One day I'm going to be smart and I'm going to learn how to operate them. I got a text message here. Excuse me, I checked this. Oh, it's from my bro again. One of my other powwow buddies. It says, hey bro, if I slept with your woman and she got pregnant, would we still be bros? <laughs> No, we would be even. That's my time. Thank you very much. My name is Gilbert Brown. I'm with another Indian Uprising.